be remembered for passion and enthusiasm. Conservation is my job, my life, my whole persona. This is the story of the tragic demise of one of the most beloved TV personalities and wildlife conservationists in Australia. Steve Irwin lived and breathed nature, and over the decades had cemented himself as the face of wildlife documentaries across the world. But it was among the nature and wildlife he loved that he died an agonizing death, sending shockwaves around the world and devastating his family and fans. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. This is the tragic story of Steve Irwin the Crocodile Hunter. Welcome to Final Affliction. It was September 4, 2006, another day at work for 44-year-old Steve Irwin as he loaded his truck with supplies and equipment and set off for the Bat Reef near Port Douglas in northeastern Australia. He and his crew were preparing to shoot underwater footage for an upcoming documentary called Ocean's Deadliest for the Discovery Channel directed by John Stanton. For several days prior to the scheduled shoot, John couldn't shake an eerie feeling that something bad was about to happen. He talked to his friends and producer requesting to call off the documentary. But the channel had already spent too much money on the project and could not afford further delays. But John Stanton still had an uneasy sensation that something would go wrong. He drafted a will and reluctantly set off for the reef accompanied by Steve Irwin and his cameraman Justin Lyons. On the morning of September 4th, after arriving at the small town near Port Douglas, they boarded Steve Irwin's 75-foot research boat called the Croc 1 and sailed to the Bat Reef, near the Great Barrier Reef on the eastern Australian coast. The area hosted various species of marine life, including sea turtles, dolphins, and whales, but the crew wanted to encounter a shark to film for this episode, and so they donned their suits and put on their snorkels for a dive into the water. The sea was muddier than usual, and Steve and his cameraman Justin could not find a safe spot to look for a wandering shark. They decided it was best to call off the shoot for the day, as it was not the right time. But before they left, Steve Irwin spotted something that piqued his interest. It was not a shark, but a beautiful stingray. These marine animals could grow up to 5 meters or 16 feet in length, including a long piercing tail of which they had great control and agility. It was their primary weapon in the underwater ecosystem. But Steve Irwin was not irked by the creature. He had been doing this his entire life and knew that stingrays were not known to attack humans unless provoked or accidentally stomped on. Steve swam closer to the animal until it was right beneath him. He thought this was the perfect angle to film some shots for his daughter Bindi's upcoming wildlife children's show called Bindi the Jungle Girl. He signaled his cameraman to swim down to him and start filming the animal. It was a serene sight. In the backdrop of the colorful ocean floor, stingrays had seldom been observed in such close proximity, as they would usually swim off or bury themselves in the sand upon encounters with humans. As Justin Lyons swam closer to Steve Irwin, they were blissfully ignorant of what was about to happen next. Steve Irwin was now only a few feet above the stingray, trying to work out the best angle to get a shot. But as he hovered closer, the stingray suddenly lunged its long, sharp tail upwards, slicing through Steve Irwin's chest. He didn't immediately realize the magnitude of the attack, and a numbing sensation engulfed his body for a few seconds. In the commotion of the water before they tried to swim back up, Steve Irwin instructed Justin to keep the camera rolling. Even in such dire circumstance, he wanted to get something out of the encounter. Justin Lyon, however, was painfully aware of what had just happened. There was a large two-inch hole in Steve's chest, and he was now bleeding profusely, turning the surrounding water red. Fearing that the blood could attract a nearby shark, Justin grabbed Steve Irwin and urged him to swim up to safety. When they resurfaced, the gravity of his injuries became immediately clear. Steve Irwin was now in excruciating pain and losing blood fast. He screamed to Justin that his lungs had been punctured by the brutal attack, but the reality was far worse. The stingray's tail had cut into the side of Steve's heart, and the massive blood loss meant that he could lose his life in a few short minutes. Justin Lyons screamed to the crew on the boat that Steve Irwin was badly injured and needed help fast. The colleagues frantically threw him on an inflatable speedboat and quickly tried to get him to land. 
All the while they were with Steve, he displayed an indomitable spirit. He was losing consciousness, and as Justin and the crew forced weight on the wound to stop the bleeding, they called on him to stay alive for the sake of his family and his two children. Steve Irwin realized these were indeed his final moments, and calmly said he was going to die as they administered CPR. A few minutes later, he stopped moving. His eyes closed and his face turned blue. Steve Irwin, famed wildlife conservationist and beloved TV presenter, was dead. Got a beautiful white blaze on his chest. Oh. He thinks I'm gonna take the banana off him. I gave him the banana. And what do you want to be when you grow up? Just like my daddy. Just like your daddy. Australian crocodile hunter Steve Irwin has died during a diving expedition near Port Douglas in Australia. He was a charismatic crocodile hunter who cheated death again and again. Terry Irwin has spoken of the loss of the man she called the love of her life. In a statement read by Steve's dad, she thanked the thousands who offered their condolences and she's decided his public memorial will be held where Steve felt most comfortable, the crocodile pen at Australia Zoo. Paramedics were called on the shore for a faint chance of resuscitating him, but it only took them a few seconds to declare that Steve Irwin had succumbed to his injuries and passed away. Even if he had been taken to a hospital, there was little chance that he could survive a strike straight into his heart. The stingray's razor-sharp tail had cut through Steve's chest, and he died among the animals and wildlife he had loved and cherished his entire life. The entire ordeal from the stab of the stingray's tail to the final moments that the paramedics were trying to revive Steve Irwin were captured on Justin Lyon's camera. But in respect for Steve's fighting spirit and to save his family the pain of witnessing the scene of his death, Justin deleted the final copy of the tape after a brief police investigation. The footage was never seen or released, but the sight of Steve's horrifying and painful final moments remained forever ingrained in the memory of the crew on board and the colleagues that loved and cherished him. His wife and children were on a trip in Tasmania when they heard the news of Steve Irwin's demise, and they were devastated and inconsolable at the tragic loss of their husband and father. His wife Terry and his children Bindi and Rob immediately traveled to the Australia Zoo, which Steve Irwin had run and were met with love and consolation from thousands of adoring fans outside. Steve Irwin had earlier remarked that he would consider his final purpose in life fulfilled if he could pass on the torch of nature conservation to his children. In keeping with their father's wish, Bindi and Rob became dedicated zookeepers and conservationists and worked to carry on Steve Irwin's legacy in honor of his tragic and untimely final affliction.